Okay, I'm back. So as I was saying, um, you have to make this a whole family thing. And you've got to have the mentality of, like I said, do not look at it like, oh my God, this is going to be hard. You know what? You're going to make it that way. If you want to think about it as being a trial, a hardship, a, I see it all the time, like I said earlier, and it ticks me off. You have to look at it like, I want to get healthy. I'm, going to, I'm getting up tomorrow and I'm starting to eat healthy. And I want to be healthy. I want to feel good. I want to look good. I want everything to just be right. And if you pass it on to your children, you'll get them on the right path as adults. I had five kids, not a one of, they were all as thin as could be, lean as could be, they still are. My kids are all lean, healthy kids. But um, you have to know that you're the role model if you have kids, you know. If you're gonna fill your kitchen with garbage, they're gonna eat it. You cannot have it in your house. I do not have any garbage in my house at all right now. Um, if I decide that I want something um, yummy, I, like, I treat myself once a week. I don't believe in total deprivation, but I do believe in not having it in your house because you or your kids will eat it. Um, let's say it's a Friday. Pick a day that, you know, it's going to be a relaxed day, not a troubled day. Don't, don't go with that thinking of, oh, well, God, it's such a tough day today. I'm going to go eat this, whatever. Because then you get that psychological, you know, uh, you think, well, if it's a bad day, so I'm going to eat. So you start thinking that way. No, look at it the other way. Like when I'm having a really good day, let's say it's just been a great day, my son is off from work, I don't have to worry about anything, I think, let's go get a treat, you know, just to enjoy it for that moment. So I'll go and buy a treat, go to the store, buy something like a slice of a cake, uh, you know, gluten-free, or a slice of something, or a piece of something, enjoy it, that's it. I don't touch it after that. That's the way you can treat yourself, and I do say treat yourself. Don't reward. Don't look at food as a reward. I do not believe in that. I think that's one of the worst things we do in this country is reward with food. Um, if you uh, decide to lose weight, for instance, let's say uh, you decide to lose weight, and let's say you need to lose 50 pounds or however many pounds, don't tell yourself you have to lose 50 pounds because then it's overwhelming. You tell yourself, I'm going to lose 5 pounds now. You get on this healthy way of eating. I'm telling you, eat nothing but vegetables, a little bit of fruit, lean meats, seafood if you like it, water. Forget the juices. You know, those juices, I don't care if they're 100% juice. It goes into your body, turns into straight sugar. I mean, it just goes to sugar. So start drinking lots of water with your meals. You know, when you get thirsty, drink a glass of water. You know, put a little flavoring, like maybe a squeeze of a lemon or a lime or something in, you know, hot summer months, especially in the winter, make it like a tea or whatever. Drink lots of water. Uh, now, I'm not one who's going to tell you every hour drink 16 ounces. No, I don't do that either. I don't, you know, I'm not going to live my life in the bathroom. But I do keep myself hydrated. Um, and I do drink water instead. So I know I'm getting my, my water quota there. Um, and, and start with that mentality of I'm going to get healthy. Don't look at it that way. And when you lose that first five pounds, reward yourself. I don't care how small it is. Go buy a new pair of shoes, a new shirt, or uh, a piece of jewelry. Or if you don't have a lot of money and you're thinking, well, I'd like to reward myself, but I don't have a lot of money. If you like to do something like polish your nails, go get a $3 bottle of polish. You know what I'm saying? Just find something within your range of, of finances to reward yourself with. But don't make it food, because then you're going to just keep tricking yourself back and forth and fooling yourself, and that's not what you want. And so as you continue to do that, you say, I lost another five pounds, you feel good, you feel great, and then the next five pounds before you know it, you hit that 50 pounds or whatever. But if you keep telling yourself, I have 40, 80, 90 pounds, that it, it's overwhelming. And it can, I know, I had five kids, and with my fifth one, I got up to 200 pounds. And believe me, I, this is another issue that... Um, a lot of people, I believe they've been misled. I exercised one year. For one solid year, I exercised two hours a day, one or two hours a day for six days a week, heart thumping, sweat pouring, working out. And at the end of the year, I do not exaggerate when I tell you I did not lose one single pound. So I was kind of wondering what was going on. So I called a doctor. He says, did you change your way of eating? Did you change your calories? I was like, no. He goes, then you're not going to lose weight unless you're out there running a marathon for about seven hours a day, which of course not too many people are going to do. So he says, you can stop exercising tomorrow and change your diet and you're going to lose weight. Well, I did. Now, I'm not telling you to stop exercising, but um, I stopped exercising the next day. And I started changing my food. I started eating vegetables, a little fruit, lean meats, water. Guess what? First week, the weight started coming off. I lost the weight. And I was like, wow, I can't believe I worked myself to death. Um, I, 
and uh, another quick example, I'll give you the neighborhood I lived in many years ago. There was this woman. We lived in this one house for five years. This woman would run every day. I mean, we are talking every day this woman ran. She would run. She would be gone for an hour. I'd even see her in other parts of town when I'd go to the store and stuff. Run, run, run all over. Her weight never, ever changed. She was kind of heavy. She never, I never saw her weight go down. So obviously, you know, there's something to, uh, I don't believe in the whole theory of if you exercise, that alone is going to make you lose weight. Unless, like I say, six, seven hours a day, then maybe. But for the average person, no. Um, I exercise three times a week. I do half an hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I put on my favorite music and I break out dancing. You know, move, do all kinds of movements, whatever. Just get that body moving. Um, and I wanted to tell you that if you're in a situation where you want to lose weight, but you find the whole thing overwhelming, you know, I see these shows, you got to exercise, you got to watch your diet, you got to, you got to, it can be so overwhelming that you say, forget it. So what I say is if you're going to be serious about losing weight, start with at least the diet change first, okay? Then get into the exercise. I personally don't believe when I see these really obese people exercising on TV, it ticks me off. I believe that that is extreme stress on the joints, it's extreme stress on the heart. I don't think it's a good thing. We've even seen some shows where they've passed out, what have you. I think that shows, those shows are insane and crazy. When I see these super obese people doing that hard running, working out, and they're sweating, and they're, you can see they look like they're ready to drop dead, I just, the, that ticks me off. Um, it's a slow process. If, if you want to start the weight loss, like I say, start with your diet first, okay? If it's all too overwhelming, if you can't do both. If you can, then great. But if not, that first. And once you start losing that weight, you're going to feel better. You're going to want to move more. You're going to kind of naturally want to move more. Um, when I first started ex exercising here again this last uh, January, I hadn't exercised in years. I was in a, if you knew my life story, you'd wonder why I was put away in a psych ward somewhere. But it was the last several years were very difficult, and I just didn't exercise. Well, it, I could only get through five minutes in January. Five minutes of dancing around. I was like, oh, my gosh. So I figured, you know what, I'm going to follow my body. I'm going to listen to my body. So, either, you know, I chose Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to do it because I, I was the kind of person that when I did it every day, I hated it. I was miserable, and I, it just was no good for me mentally or physically. So I chose three days a week. So... Each day, I would add on even just as much as just a minute more, you know, each day that I did it. And now, I exercise half an hour. That half an hour feels like five minutes. I mean, I, I can't even believe it goes by so quick, and I feel great. I wouldn't go without it now. Um, I'm telling you, it made a huge difference in the way I feel. I, I, I would never go without it now, especially as you get older. You want to keep those joints and muscles, you know, uh, uh, limber and, and moving around. I don't want to end up in a wheelchair because of obesity that has damaged all my back and my muscles and my joints. I don't want to end up like that. And that's what happens to these people, as well as diabetes. Diabetes is, um, as, you, as you all know, it's a terrible, terrible thing that is taking over this country. And the more carbohydrates you have in your di diet, the more likely you are to, to get that diabetes or pre-diabetic condition. You need to get rid of carbohydrates. I mean, you just eat the healthy kind. And I do not believe in grains. I'm sorry. What do you think they fatten up cows and pigs with? You know? What do you think they fatten up these animals for us to eat? They fatten them up with grains, okay? That ought to tell you something. You're being, you know, that they fatten them up with grains. Um, I will give you a quick example of my own uh, dogs. Uh, one of my dogs kept gaining weight, gaining weight to where he actually had a roll of fat around his neck when he would have his head up. You'd see the rolls. And I had him on a good grade food, but it was, uh, you know, wheat, corn, soy, all the grains in there. And so I thought, why not apply it to him? So I applied it to him, and guess what? <laughs> I put him on grain free food, which you can buy at a pet food store. I bought a big old bag. And within one week, he started losing weight, and in three weeks, the roll of fat was completely gone from his neck. So I keep them both on um, uh, fat or grain-free food. They are the healthiest, most rambunctious little dogs. My little chihuahua, she's 11, and you would think she was one. Same with my other one. He's about seven or eight. And he's, you'd think they were puppies. They're so healthy and running around and everything. So uh, I got to tell you. I don't believe in grains, don't believe in dairy. You, you know, you can make up your own minds on this, uh, but you have to stop and think, 
you know, dairy was meant for baby cows, not for humans. I'm sorry, I don't buy it. I do take a multivitamin that has mineral. I do that vitamin C that I have you put on your skin. I also take that every day. I take half a teaspoon every day with my multivitamin mineral. And I take a calcium tablet with, uh, uh, I have a liquid form of mag magnesium. Because they say if you take just the calcium tab tablet, that's bad for your heart and your arteries. It can actually cause them to harden. So I take the calcium with this liquid form of um, ma magnesium. I feel great. I have more energy than ever. My, even my 20-year-old son is always telling me, Mom, slow down, stop, whatever. I can't. I have energy. I've got to burn that energy off, and I'm glad because, you know, I don't want to be one of these, oh, God, I can barely move and everything hurts. I don't want to end up like that. I want to be healthy. Um, I think I have to go on to another one. Hold on a minute. <laughs>